it's getting hot in her, or at least it's about to, because this is a chamber heater that I built for my X1C. So before I dive a little bit more into this, I'll talk a bit about the reasoning and as well as the project. So the reasoning behind it, this is not uh, what I'm having issues with. This is actually PLA. This is a scout trooper helmet that I'm working on for somebody. Um, but the big reason is things like this material here. This is ASA. This is all ASA here. A lot of like, I usually print with ABS. This is all ABS here. Didn't really have any issues with that. But then once I started printing the bamboo ASA, I started noticing more issues with lifting. I actually do have some polycarbonate with carbon fiber there and the big fancy stuff, this PAHTCF. So I think that's uh, nylon. The HT I think is for high tensile strength and of course carbon fiber. So I really want to print with this stuff, but I was running into some issues with it. One issue being the moisture absorption. So nylon is pretty bad about absorbing moisture. This one is supposed to be better because it's nylon 12 versus nylon six, but I have noticed that it really readily absorbs moisture still. So that's why it's actually sitting up in here in this AMS with the desiccant in there. You can see that's at 19 and this one over here is at 10. So that should be at 10 or below as well. But uh, I think I'm actually gonna have to dry the desiccant in there again, even though I only did it like a week ago. But this stuff absorbs moisture so much that I'm just keeping it up in this AMS here. Cause yeah, most of my filament I store out haven't really had issues with it, but now this one I am. So the issues, again, moisture and as well lifting. So I tried a textured plate. I tried the smooth plate. I have magic goo over there. I have the bamboo glue stick. I tried a whole bunch of things, but no matter what I tried, it would lift and it would be like, maybe like one or two mils up, like barely, barely any layers were put down. I was even using a 0.6 nozzle, so it should print even faster, but I was having nothing but issues with lifting. So that is a big reason behind that. ASA, PAHT, other things like that. I'm going to be printing more of that, PET CF, some other things. So this is the project here, Chamber Heater by FSJ. It's actually a remix of a remix of a remix. So the original design was actually just a support for the auxiliary fan. Pretty sure it was mainly designed for the P1P, uh, but somebody took it, remixed it, added a PTC heater, couple fans, this is a further remix to it, just adding a little bit of a lip at the bottom there to help deflect some of that airflow up because apparently they were running into some issues with heat deflection of the lower injection molded surfaces just because it was pumping that heat right into there. So yeah, this is the unit here, Chamber Heater by FSJ. And that's what I printed over there. I'll get back to it in a moment. And as well, the power supply. So this is just a simple enclosure with uh, the temperature controller and it just houses the power supply and everything. So um, I'm gonna take a walk back over to the parts here. Excuse me, giddy. Uh, take a walk back over the parts. And I just wanted to say there's, there's a couple of weak points. Like uh, even on the first model, this hole didn't line up. This hole didn't line up for the fan. This hole didn't line up. So you can only get one fastener in there. So a little bit annoying. Um, I'm going to modify this design before I reprint it. Uh, but this is actually printed out of ASA. I did get some really good, really good print out of this. Um, it like, it didn't lift. I had no issues with this ASA after I preheated my chamber for, it was probably about 20 minutes, got the temp to about 49 degrees. And then I printed this out. So printed that out of ASA because it has a heat deflection of about hundred degrees Celsius. But that PAHT, I think it's like 200, 200 something. And then PET CF is like 220. So I did actually order a spool of PET CF because I'm going to give that a try too. But right now, just going to give it a try with this for now. So this is, I opted for the 24 volt, 200 watt PTC heater. Uh, these fans are also 24 volt. I did wire the heater separate. So the heater, I'll open up the controller here. Uh, so the heater will be wired into the controller here. So it'll only be on when it needs the heat. And then I just put a barrel connector here for the fans. So the fans will just always be on. They'll always be running. So there'll always be airflow through there. But then the PTC heater will only kick on when it needs to um, make up the difference in temperature. So 
yeah, that was, I guess I talked a little bit about the weak points there. I mean, it's not the biggest deal, but just limited fastener. This one, I also feel like it could use some changes too. You can see power supply is actually just sitting loose in there because there are no fastener locations in the bottom. And in my case, I just drilled a hole through there because like I said, I'm running the uh, PTC heater separately off the STC 1000 because I just, I, I like I could have ran the fans together so that it all comes on at the same time, but I thought it's just better if I just keep the fans circulating through there. So if it cuts off, then it's still pushing air through there. So you just won't have a hot spot or anything. So we'll see how it works uh, when I put it in there. But yeah, this is all wired up here. I put some nice uh, fork connectors on there, spade connectors, uh, ferrules on here and wired it all in nicely. Even got this good old little barrel connector here so that I can plug in my fans. But this is ultimately all ready to go. I'm just pretty much waiting for the next step, which is to put it in the machine. Um, I'm probably actually going to print another part of this helmet tonight before I end up putting that in there. But one of my ideas is actually uh, squeezing. Yeah, barely can see back there. I'm thinking I might just actually drill a hole in the bottom there. Um, not the greatest because what, whatever. I, I like modding things. I don't really care that much. Not everybody's going to want to drill a hole. But I'm probably just going to drill a hole, design a little like TPU grommet or something like that. And then I'll just feed the wires through there so that I can just run the power supply off to the side. Because like my bento box here, I did feed the cabling behind and then through. But there's going to be a lot more cables. They're going to be thicker. And I just don't want to bother with like feeding them through a back panel and all that. So the chamber heater will just sit under there. Probably going to feed the cables in under there. I do have to check the belt path because there is three lead screws and they're controlled by one stepper motor. And there's just a belt loop underneath, uh, underneath this unit here. So I'll definitely have to check the belt path and make sure that I don't drill into it. But I'm just going to pretty much like flip it upside down on here check my hole location, punch a hole through, and then go from there. Cause I think that's gonna be the easiest way to route those cables through there. Um, yeah, but ultimately if you're looking for a chamber heater, this is a good option. It doesn't give you a whole lot of instructions actually in this, this one here. They pretty much said, I'm not giving you instructions because if you don't know how to figure this out, you shouldn't be doing this. And I'm like, you know what? That That's a fair point. Like if you don't know how to wire these things in, configure it all, set up the temperature controller, you probably shouldn't be doing this. So yeah, if, if you want to get yourself a chamber heater, this is an option. There are other options. I haven't really dived much into those because again, I have the bento box on this side and there are some really nice enclosures, some housings that even control, like uh, contain the temperature, um, the temperature controller within it and you can fit it in the side there. But as I have that bento box, the carbon and HEPA filtration, I didn't want to put it there because I really like having that because it honestly makes a huge difference for my ASA and ABS. So yeah, uh, just go over the, <laughs> the projects again chamber heater remixed by fsj as well as psu and temp controller for temp controller case for chamber heater maxim 3d so if you want to print this up there are other iterations of this power supply box and i think there even are other iterations of this one that sits underneath the auxiliary fan but these are the ones that i ultimately decided on Bill of Materials is more or less laid out in this one, uh, but they did quote a 24 volt 100 watt PTC heater. I opted for a 200 watt because off here I have a 350 watt 24 volt power supply. So I just opted for a bigger PTC heater because then uh, it, uh, yeah, it'll provide a little bit faster heat and whatnot. But that's about it for now. Uh, I'm going to get back to, well, I'm going to pull that off the machine and give it a, give it a once over and then uh, get the next thing on this machine and go from there. So that's it. That's all. Cheers for now.